Hello and welcome back. We will continue our journey with the F6 taxation uh, employment income. We looked at the salary, we know what salary is, we know what bonus is. We also looked at uh, lots and lots of benefits in the previous lessons. Now we, what we need to look at is what we have to deduct out of that. So you remember salary, then bonus, plus benefits and less uh, allowable deductions. So we will look at the allowable deductions now, all right? Now, could you please uh, move to page 14 of your notes? I will share the screen with you as well. Here you go. Uh, that is page 14. Now, on, on page 14, it says allowable deductions. Now, these are the expenses. These are the list of expenses which are given there. Now, these are the expenses which are uh, allowable deductions. Uh, and uh, these are uh, deducted from the salary. These are deducted from the benefits. All right. Now, if employee is paying for these expenses, these will be deductible. Uh, employee will be paying for it, so that's why these will be deductible. However, if these expenses are paid by employer, what will be happen then? What would happen then? If the employer pays for these expenses, then these will be exempt benefits. So in both cases, it is benefit of employee. So if employee is paying, the, these are allowable deductions. So we will deduct it out of the salary. So the salary will be reduced. So we will pay less tax on reduced salary. We are not reducing the salary. We are just reducing for taxable purposes. So we will pay less tax. All right. So these are the list of uh, allowable deductions. So what are, what are these? First of all, it says contribution of occupational pension scheme. So you know there are two pension schemes. One is occupational, which is uh, managed by your boss, uh, by your company, for which you work, uh, and the other one is personal pension. So contribution to occupational pension is allowable deduction. Second one is subscri subscription to professional bodies. Uh, so it could be ICC, uh, ACM, or ICW, right? So it will be deductible expense if you pay annual subscription. Uh, so you must uh, deduct it out of the salary. Then it says payment to charity made under a payroll deduction scheme operated by employer so it will also be deducted if you pay something if you're paying something to the uh, charity uh, then it will also be deducted out of the salary payment for liability incurred due to his employment if you are going on audit and if you have done some uh, mistake uh, which is a professional mistake so if any, any claim has been made and you have paid that penalty so that will also be deducted Payment for premium, payment of premium for insurance to cover the liability uh, to be incurred due to his employment. So uh, payment uh, for the premium of insurance. So you know the insurances of professional uh, qualifications uh, like accountants and auditors and doctors and lawyers. So they are professional insurances. So if you pay any premium for that, uh, that will also be deductible. Approved mileage allowance, we have seen already what is approved mileage allowance uh, up to 10,000 miles something else over 10,000 miles is something else so uh, approved mileage allowance is exempt uh, sorry deductible qualifying travel expenses are deductible so qualifying travel expenses what are these we will see in a minute uh, travel expenses now qualifying travel expenses now there's a uh, list now tells you what are the qualifying travel expenses now, there are three types of qualifying expenses travel expenses the arrows shows you beneath that uh, there are three arrows now these arrows will show you uh, uh, what are exempt and what are deductible all right now it tells that tra travel expenses if you read above just beneath seven travel expenses for travel between home and normal place of work uh, is not deductible so if you are going from home to accountancy tube office so if you're, I'm coming from home to accountancy tube, whatever expense is incurred, that is not deductible. Say, for example, if my boss says, uh, instead of this studio, could you please go to a studio in Manchester? So if I go to a studio in Manchester from here, uh, then I am not working here. I'm working in Manchester. So from here to Manchester, uh, that will be deductible. So travel from uh, travel expenses, the second one, travel expenses for travel between normal place of work and temporary place of work is is deductible the third one says travel expenses for travel between home and temporary workplace so instead of coming here and going from here to Manchester what is thought is 
why don't I go f straight from my uh, home to Manchester so that will be easier for me instead of coming here. So if it is, I'm going from home to not temporary workplace which is in Manchester, if I'm going there, if it is up to 24 months then that's fine, if it is more than that that will be, uh, that, that will be taxable. So it says travel expenses from, uh, for travel between home and temporary workplace is deductible if it is not more than 24 uh, months and it shows you in the uh, arrows as well. So from normal place of work to home it is not allowed from normal place of work uh, to temporary place of work is allowed and from home to temporary work workplace is only allowed uh, if it is uh, less than 12 24 months number eight says cost of business telephone calls mail and private telephone is deductible but no part of uh, line rent is deductible so if i have a mobile phone uh, it is my personal mobile but i use it for uh, business purposes uh, that is deductible cost made however line rent is not deductible number nine it says appropriate proportion of cost of heating lighting and council tax uh, while working at home uh, will also be deductible so if you're working at home uh, whatever light, uh, heating and lighting i am incurring uh, uh, my boss is reimbursing me that amount that will also be deductible so if my boss is paying for that that will be exempt if i am paying for it that will be deductible from my salary all right now just beneath that if you go uh, it again tells you the allowable deductions now this is a misprint uh, it has come twice in our notes it says allowable deduction again now please go to 15 page, page number 15 uh, and it is exactly the same thing please go to if you go to page number 16 after that uh, it says employment and self-employment right employment and self-employment now what is the difference between employment and self-employment employment is we know employment because we have been studying employment income for quite long employment income is if I work for someone whereas self-employed if I'm employed I'm working for someone if I'm self-employed I'm not working for someone I'm working for my own self if I work for my own self I might set up set up my business as a company or I might provide the services on my own so that will be self-employed but if you if we consider about from tax perspective uh, normally self-employed pays less tax than employed so what then people tries to do is everybody tries to be self-employed everybody pretends to be self-employed so they tell him Shamasi that I am self-employed instead of employed if you're self-employed if it is not only it is not only benefit for the person who is paying tax but it is also uh, beneficial for the company who he is working for. Say, for example, if I am working for Accountant Institute, I am getting paid the salary. If I am getting paid the salary, so you know I am paying tax, and my boss might pay tax as well on my salary. We will see later another type of tax, which is national insurance contribution. Then you will understand it better. So uh, everybody tries to be self-employed. If everybody tries to be self-employed. Uh, then HMRC says no that's we can't do that uh, if someone is playing with the rules then we s must set a criteria we will look at that criteria then we will determine who is employed and who is self-employed and the people who are showing themselves as self-employed whereas they actually are employed uh, we will have to deal with them right so what is the criteria uh, determined by HMRC here you go if you look at your screen uh, it is uh, employment and self-employment and this is the criteria set out by HMRC right <coughs> the following factors should be considered to distinguish between a person who is employed or self-employed employment involves contract of services and whereas um, self-employment is contract for services so this is the list which is very very important as far as F6 is concerned you must uh, memorize this list because you're definitely going to be examined uh, some of these things uh, most likely in uh, MCQ's part because uh, uh, examiner could ex ex examine you this one and it has been examined from uh, in many attempts so please make sure you mark it as important uh, this is a list of which we, in which you can differentiate between employment and self-employment right the second one it says uh, degree of control so the first one was what is written in the contract so uh, it is if it is contract of services uh, then it is employment if it is contract for services then it is uh, self-employment 
then it says employment involves uh, then it says sorry degree of control exercised over the person doing the work so if uh, i hope you would appreciate the fact someone who is employee is controlled by employer whereas someone who is self employed he is not controlled by the person who is working for he is self employed so he is not controlled so if you are controlled by someone then you are employed whether he must accept further work if you must first if you must accept further work uh, say for example if you are working for a company and your boss is not good he will give you some more work then more work and he will give you he will keep giving you work again and again then you must accept it because you are working for him so if you must accept further work then you are employed otherwise you are self employed then it says whether the other party must provide further work if the other party must provide further work then that is also indication of employment whether he provides his own equipment if the someone who is providing the services provides his own equipment then it is indication of self employment because you know that who is self employed if you go to a car repairer they've got their own equipment so if your car mechanic comes to your door uh, he is self employed he comes with his own uh, if he with his own uh, you know tools all right whether he hires his own helpers if he hires his own helpers that will also be indication of self employment <clears throat> excuse me what degree of financial risk he takes if i take any financial risk i am i am giving the lectures here but am i taking any financial risk no i am not taking any financial risk if i am not taking any financial risk it indication it is indication of um, employment or if i would be taking any financial risk then i would be self employed what degree of responsibility for the investment and management he has uh, do i have any responsibility of investment and management i don't think so if i don't have then i am employed if i am ha i do have then i will be self employed all right then it says whether he can profit from sound management i cannot profit from sound management i am employed whether he can work uh, uh, when he chooses uh, if i can work when i choose then i will be uh, uh, self employed so if i if i cannot choose my timing of work then i am uh, employed all right then it says uh, uh the wording used in the agreement so we'll have to see the uh, wording which is used in the agreement uh, so we will determine by the agreement wording uh, whether someone is employed or self employed all right now if you see beneath that it is pay system now pay system is a system uh, by which your salary is deducted so when you check your pay slip you have got something called gross salary then there are lots of deductions and and the end you get uh, what is known as net income uh, and that is the amount which is paid in your bank account all right so the pay system is a system uh, called pay as you earn so while you're earning you're paying as well so it is automatic deduction so let's read them most tax in respect of employment income is deducted by pay system it is already deducted uh, it is employer's duty to deduct income tax from pay of his employees uh, it is employer's duty and then pay to hmrc hmrc a tax code of uh, 1060 l to employees who are entitled to personal allowance will be given so 10000 uh, 1060 is a tax code which is written on your pay slip which if it, it is normal so if it is it indicates that uh, how much personal allowance you are given so to the standard people it is this one uh, it varies uh, to different people pay tax code will be applied to the salary of uh, employee when calculating the amount of income tax that has to be paid each month under the pay system right then it says employee must uh, submit information of salary payment to hmrc electronically on or before the date of salary payment employer uh, employees with more than 250 employees must pay their pay payment electronically by 22nd it is 20 it, you must write it down as 22nd there is a mistake a 22nd of a month following the salary payment so if the salary is paid this month so 22nd of next month in case of late filing of pay penalty of 400 pound will be imposed on the employer right at the end of each tax year the employer must provide each employee with a p60 form so at every year end p60 form is given to every employee so p60 is a summary of uh, what you have been doing all the year this shows total tax earning for the year tax deducted uh, co uh, code number ni number and the employee name and address 
P60 must be provided by 31st May following the year of assessment. The following the end of tax year, uh, the employer must send HMRC by 19th May. Uh, what he must send by 19th May, end of uh, year, uh, end of year returns, which are P14, uh, and it is showing the same details of P60. So P60 is for employee, uh, which employer must give to employee, and P14 has got same details, and employ it is for employer, and it must. Uh, employer must send to HMRC, right? Then it says something called P35. This is another uh, form uh, which uh, shows us the summary of tax and NI deducted from all employees. So it is of employer, it is showing all the tax which has been deducted, right? So the date to submit these things were 19 May. Now another things which he must submit is by 6th of July. So what he must submit by 6th of July? So here is the list of things which you must submit by 6th of July. First thing is called a form P11D. Now this is the form which lists the benefits of directors and employees uh, uh, which are paid 8500 per annum uh, at least, right? So P11D is the list of benefits which are paid to directors who are earning more than 8500 pounds. Then P11D uh, P11DB it is return of uh, class 1 NIC and now class 1 NI class 1 A NI we will see later in the text it says as well in the notes so we haven't seen the national insurance now so you will understand it better when we move to national insurance we'll see in a couple of uh, chapters in a couple of lectures we might well see in the next lecture right then it says uh, uh, form P 90 D benefits etc for other employees so if it these are directors and for them directors uh, the form is called p11d for other employees it is called p90d so they must submit when employee leaves the job p45 is given so if you leave the job a p45 form is given then the, this p45 form is uh, taken by you must show it to your new boss new employee uh, whereby uh, where are you starting the new job right so when employee leaves the job a form p45 is pre prepared by employer and is provided to employee. This form shows the employer, employee's tax able earnings and pay deducted in tax year in his tax code. The employer should provide P45 to employees by 31st May after the end of tax year in which employee left the job. All right? That is for this lecture and uh, we've almost covered uh, lots of stuff. Now at this level, please make sure you try to uh, attempt the questions as well from the exam kit. Please make sure you buy one from approved learning providers. There are quite many in the market, uh, but please make sure you buy one from approved learning providers. I would prefer you buy from BPP, uh, but it's up to you. All of all of them are fine. They are perfectly all right. All right? So that's it for now, uh, and I will see you in the next lecture uh, with more bits and pieces of uh, ACCA uh, F6 taxation. Uh, and uh, good luck to you, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.